I'm Laura Mariani. Today I'm going to present uh, linking strategy to operations, the use of balance scorecard to manage performance. The aim of this contribution is to highlight the relationship between strategy making and the performance management system with uh, a specific attention to the framework of the balance scorecard. Here the agenda of this uh, presentation. First of all, I'm going to introduce uh, the relationship between strategy and performance management system. Secondly, I'm going to show you uh, the levels of decision making uh, processes and related performance management. Then I'm going to introduce the framework of the balance scorecard. And finally, I close with some concluding remarks. With reference to the first point, uh, here I propose to um, identify the strategic objectives uh, such as uh, the results uh, of the organizational uh, ability to capture uh, stimuli from the wider environment on one hand as well as to face the stakeholder needs and demands. This strategic objective can be fulfilled uh, through the everyday operation of the organization, therefore through activities. Here we have a, present a representation very simple of these activities so through this input output model. We have here the organization, the companies that uh, have uh, resources, which are the inputs, uh, which may be human capital, financial resources, as well as um, material resources and so on, that are then combined together uh, within the processes and uh, these are transformed into the outputs which are the final product of the organization or the services provided. In this context, a framework to measure performance indicators um, can concern the inputs, the processes and the outputs. Therefore, we have key performance indicators that are able to identify if input processes or outputs are performed according to efficiency and effectiveness criteria. The most important measure of uh, performance of the companies is, for example, the relationship between revenues and expenses. And this relates uh, the outputs of the organization together with the inputs, in particular, uh, financial value of the outputs, which are the revenues on one hand, and on the other hand, financial value of the inputs, which are the expenses. The, differ the differences between revenues and expenses is profit, when of course revenues are higher than expenses, or losses, in the case that expenses are higher than revenues. This is the most important way to measure the performance of an organization. However, this relates just to the output and the inputs. The way in which these performance indicator and measures are actually used within the organization depends on the performance management system. Therefore, performance management system are the mechanisms that are put in place to use this performance indicator so as to influence the organization to change and improve. Therefore, the general aim of a performance management system is providing information for decision making and the strategic aim fulfillment. Therefore, we now focus on the problem of decision making and I will show you uh, which are the levels of decision making on one hand and on the other hand, which can be the what, what can be the scope of performance measurement. With reference to the first point, um, decision making can of course at different levels, at least three levels. Here we have the decision making, the levels for decision making process that are represented to a pyramid. Uh, at the apex of the pyramid, there are the strategic level uh, decision making that involve a small number of people within the organization. At the middle have level, we have the manager uh, that, and the decision making that is related to the managerial level. Here, the number of people involved is not so small, and this includes uh, all the managers and leaders that are um, within individual uh, organizational units uh, or department. Finally, we have the last level of decision making that involves all the persons that work in the organization, that is the operational level, and this includes the decision making process making by people in everyday operation. Here we can analyze, therefore, the scope of decision making. 
and to do this uh, I propose to use the Porter's value chain where the primary activities of a company as well as the, the support activities are represented. Uh, decision making can occur both at the level of individual support activities as well as in primary activities and a decision in the, a performance management system can allow the fulfillment of this decision making process within different um, activities. The overall result is the margin uh, of value that can be summarized uh, as the differences between expenses and the revenues. In this context, uh, the with reference to decision making process and performance management, uh, we can identify some limitation of the traditional system of performance management. The first one concerns the levels of decision making. In particular, traditional systems of performance management uh, tend to separate uh, all the levels of strategic um, of decision making, therefore without an harmonization among different levels. On the other hand, the traditional performance system tend to focus on the very last part of the value chain, therefore tend to, to focus on the financial perspective and on the margin and on the dimensions of uh, revenues and expenses. To face this limitation, in 1992, uh, Professor Kaplan and Dr. Norton introduced um, a framework that was called the Balance Scorecard. The Balance Scorecard is a strategic performance management framework that has the aim to enable organization to identify manage and of course to measure its strategic objectives. Uh, it was initially introduced by the authors in 1992 article in the Arbor Business Review. Um, then uh, this was a seminal article, then other articles have been um, written by the authors as well as books. And uh, the balance scorecards were chosen by the Harvard Business Review as one of the most influential business ID and magazine histories, which referenced the period 1925 and 2000. The balance scorecard, um, the approach of balance scorecard, has the aim to overcome the limitation of previous performance uh, uh, management system. In particular, through this framework, the author wants to link all the strategic level, management level, and operational level of decision making uh, in uh, a harmonized way so as to put the strategy at the center of the organization. On the other hand, uh, the balance scorecard framework is not um, focused just on the financial perspective, but it considers another, other uh, performance uh, indicators that relate to other perspective of the organization. Here we have a representation of the scorecard. Kaplan and Norton identify four generic perspectives that cover the main uh, area of the company. And the idea of this model is to use a template for designing strategic objectives, measures, targets, and initiative within this perspective, which are the financial perspective again, but also the customer perspective, the internal processes perspective, and the last, the learning and growth perspective. With reference to the financial perspective, the aim of this perspective is to try to answer to that question. So, to succeed financially, how should we appear to our shareholders? In particular, when we translate this from the context of companies, private companies, to the context of non-profit organization and public administration, this question can be seen in this way. So to maintain financial sustainability, how should we appear to our stakeholders? The financial perspective covers the financial objectives and of an organization and enables managers to track financial success as well as stakeholder building. The second perspective is those of customer. The perspective of customer covers the customer objectives such as customer satisfaction, market share goals, as well as product and service attribute. 
And here, the organization should try to answer this question. To achieve our vision, how should we appear to our customers? In particular, when we shift from the for-profit context to the context of non-profit organization and public administration, this question can be rewritten in this way. So to achieve our vision, how should we appear to our client or users? The third perspective is those of internal processes. The internal process perspectives uh, uh, covers the internal operation goals um, and the key processes that are, that are necessary to deliver productive services. Here we try to answer this question to satisfy our shareholder and customer. What business processes must we excel at? So again, for the nonprofit and, and public organization context, to satisfy our stakeholders, what business process must we excel at? The last perspective is those of learning and growth. The perspective of learning and growth cover the intangible drivers of the future success of the organization, such as the development of human capital, the organizational capital, the informational and the infrastructural capital, the skills, training, organizational culture, and so on. And here we try to answer the que this question. So to achieve our vision, how will we can sustain our ability to change and improve? Of course, once identified the overall aims of this perspective, we can now focus on the objectives, the measure, the targets, and the initiatives. For each perspective, we can identify an objective. Related to this objective, we can identify which measures are able to capture this objective. We have to uh, identify the targets that has to be reached, and of course, all the initiatives that are required to fulfill these objectives. Here, I will give you an example of uh, uh, the internal processes of an, an industrial company. The objective, the strategic objective can, can be this one. So to reduce the waste of raw material in production. Has to fulfill this aim. Mm, a measure, a good measure could be, for example, the grams of steel for each final product. A significant target can be, for example, the reduction of steel by 5%. And this is the target. Finally, we should identify which are the initiatives that allow to reduce the waste of raw materials. And so we can suggest, for example, that providing an exceptional maintenance of the manufacturing plan so as to improve uh, the overall system and, redu and uh, reduce the waste. The last part of the balance scorecard of the overall framework is this one that is the focus on a strategy and vision. In fact, at the center of the framework, Kaplan and Norton puts, put the vision and the strategy of the organization. And uh, so as to maintain the focus on strategy and organizational vision, two principles in the balance scorecard and implementation have been defined. The use of a combination of leading and legging indicators is the first one, and the second one is the identification of a closer relationship among perspectives, so as to develop the strategic maps of the organization. With reference to the first point, the distinction um, between a leading, leading and legging indicator is helpful so, um, because the, um, the term uh, of strategic aims uh, is the long term. However, we have to coordinate these long-term uh, objectives with every day's operation. Therefore, we can use a combination of leading and legging indicator. Legging indicator are measures that focus on results at the end of a period. Um, and normally they are characterized uh, by a focus on the past performance. And even, even if they are normally easy, to identify, um, their historical nature is not able to reflect the current activities. In contrast, leading indicators are performance indicators that are able to predict the outcomes. They are measured that driving the performance of a leg measure. 
um, and they normally focus on the intermediate processes and activities. Um, on the other hand, the legend indicator monitor whether the results of the, of the outcome has been actually achieved. Uh, here I provide to you an example of leading and the legend indicator which reference to the context of the customer, um, uh, the customer perspective. An example of leading indicator can be the results of a customer satisfaction survey. This uh, kind of information just told us if our clients are happy or not, or not to, to add our product or services. On the other hand, the legend indicator can be the number of repurchases by the same, um, by the same um, client. Uh, therefore, customers, a positive customer satisfaction become um, a condition of uh, or a, a necessity condition for the increase of the number of purchases but this is not a sufficient condition. Therefore, we have the distinction between leading indicator and legend indicators. The perspective of balance scorecard has to be considered interrelated each other. So they're strict, strictly related. And the fulfillment of a, the, the objective of one perspective become a precondition for the other perspective. Here, I give you this example. Uh, skilled personnel that uh, relate to the uh, growth uh, and learning perspective is essential for improve operation of the processes dimension and so uh, to obtain eff effective and efficient operations. These effective and efficient operations has a positive effect on the perspective of client because this improves the client satisfaction, but on the other hand, this also decreases expenses therefore with a strong involvement on the financial dimension. Again, uh, the client satisfaction increased the overall revenues of the, the organization. So once we identify this uh, relationship between a key performance indicator and among different objectives, we can, we can therefore identify a strategic map. The casual relationship can be also assessed within the strategic maps. Here you have an example of strategic map. Um, the strategy map is a diagram that shows the, the organization's strategy in a single page. And this is very useful uh, for the communication of the big picture objectives to everyone in the company. And uh, with a well-designed strategy map, the employees uh, are able to see how their job actually um, affect the, the company's strategic objectives. And here you have this representation of different strategic uh, objectives within the four perspective of the balance scorecard. Let me introduce now some concluding remarks. In this presentation, um, I try to highlight the potential advantages of the balance scorecard. However, the implementation process is essential for the overall success of the implementation of Balance Scorecard. And uh, today, uh, the actual implementations of this tool among uh, a very huge number of organizations in the last 20 years can give us some highlights on how to uh, make the implementation more effective. In particular, a successful implementation requires, first of all, to clarify and translating the vision and the strategy. This process of identifying the strategic objective and visualizing them within the strategy map is the starting point for the balance scorecard. And here consensus needs to be achieved among senior leaders and managers, in particular about the key objectives that have to be put inside the balance scorecard as well as the way that uh, all these objectives um, interrelate each other. The second point concern the communication of the strategic objective and measures. The second point concern the communication of the strategic objective and measures. Communicating the overall vision in the form of a strategy map with the associated key performance indicators means that 
um, the objective are much better understood within the organization. In particular, uh, a two ways of communication system should be put in place so as to encourage, um, to allow the improvement of the dialogue from the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid. Planning a setting is another step in this process. Uh, targets should be established for each of the objectives and then we have to identify the measure uh, for the key performance indicators. And uh, in setting the targets um, or the balance scorecard, uh, we have to understand that uh, the balance scorecard is not a static tool but a framework for which a goal, therefore the target should be challenging on one hand but they also have to be achievable. The last point concern, finally, the NH strategy feedback and learning. This last point is, most, is maybe the most important. In the final stage of the management process, the balance scorecard is integrated into a learning process. Uh, it is important to put processes in place uh, uh, which enable managers to learn from their performance information and, of course, to improve uh, the future decision-making process. And uh, before closing, I would like to share with you some references uh, on this topic. In particular, my first suggestion is the first um, paper on the Ava Business Review uh, titled Balance Scorecard Translating Strategy into Action, uh, then another uh, book on Balance Scorecard for government and non-profit agencies, and of course the other two books of Kaplan and Norton on the strategy focus organization and align, uh, the alignment using the balance scorecard to create corporate synergies. Thank you for, for your attention. For any question, you can contact me by email.